What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I just wanted to do a real quick video all about one of my last uh, fishing trips I had here in Michigan. I, uh, I ended up catching over 25 pounds of largemouth, cold water largemouth here. It's ice out season. Ice just came off the lakes within the last couple weeks. So, uh, so like I said, I ended up catching over 25 pounds. It was uh, one of the biggest bags of straight largemouth that I've caught in Michigan. Probably top top four or five for sure um, and I just wanted to kind of go over exactly what I look for this time of year and some of the baits that I was throwing the, um, that day so I want to start off by saying like all of our our 200 to 1000 acre natural lakes here in Michigan all set up somewhat similar I really look for two main deals on them this time of year and you can pretty much run that pattern on all of our lakes um, or, or around here this in, in Michigan so the first thing I look for most important thing is you got to find you got to find what the fish are eating which this time of year our fish are, are feeding heavily heavily on a bluegill crappie or perch that's the most important thing this time of year to uh, to really get on a big group of fish is they're always 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 close close to bait close to what they're eating and I'm not looking for groups of 10 to 20 bluegill. I'm looking for for areas that are holding two, three hundred, four hundred bluegills, if not more. Um, I really try to find subtle breaks, slow tapering breaks with a little bit of grass, a little bit of sand. Um, it seems like you always need that perfect sand grass mix. The sand holds heat it's a clean it's a clean spot there's always bluegills around around grass and clean clean spots and sand so I look for slow tapering breaks with uh, with a ton of bluegill around them I uh, I idle on my side image um, and I really rely heavily on my forward facing sonar this time of year too to find those so number one most important thing you got to be around what the fish are eating and number two the second deal i look for is deep flats 10 to 30 if not 10 foot or deeper pretty much um in just isolated structure and what i mean by structure is either wood or isolated grass or sometimes I, i've gotten on good bites before where you can get on a, a deep flat that's got a hard line of grass what i mean by that is it's it's a it's a, a hard break in the grass or, or a straight line in the grass um, I've caught fish good this time of year doing that but a lot of our lakes don't have a ton of that it's kind of situational um, on some of the lakes around here but majority of our lakes do have some deeper wood or deeper isolated patches of grass um, like I said 10 foot or deeper all the way out to 30 35 foot flats that are, are holding that have that structure that's what I look for it's nothing real fancy I find it on my side imaging you mark it you come back and you fish it um, one thing I will say this time of year is a lot of us and myself included we always want to go out on those days that's calm sunny there's not as much wind it's a little bit warmer and it's just it's easier to fish those days like I said it's it's March here in Michigan and it's it's cold you know you're fishing a lot of a lot of times in, in 30 degree water temperature and uh, it's just not not pleasurable so got to dress warm but one thing I was gonna say is you know a lot of times the best days to be out are those overcast prefrontal days you got a low ceiling which what I mean by that is low clouds not very much Sun and the reason why is they can't see as well they can't see your bait as well our water is as clear as it's going to be throughout the entire year this time of year right as the ice comes off the lake the reason why is the wind hasn't got to it because it's had ice on it so the wind can't stir it up and there's not a million boats out on the lake um, swimming and tubing and jet skiing to, to stir it up so the water is extremely clear um, 
And I think what happens when you have a lot of sun and calm conditions is when you catch one, you bring that school to the to the boat or you have a lot of fish that follow that fish and it ends up breaking that school up quicker than if it was overcast and you can kind of raptor down or spot lock in uh, in one area and catch multiple, sometimes all the way up to, to 100 fish in a row. I've done that this time of year, if not more. So, so you want that overcast, cloudy conditions. They just bite better. I don't know. I don't know what it is, but they just, they do. Um, so I went over what I was looking for um, that given day. So now let's break down some of the baits. So I really keep it simple this time of year. There's not a whole lot you can throw. Um, but in this video that I'm playing through right now, I, I really caught fish on two deals. Um, I was fishing those deeper flats, that isolated structure with a Ned Rig, just a quarter ounce Ned Rig, eight pound line, um, and just super simple setup. Anyone can fish it, just let it get to the bottom and, and slowly drag it or slowly scoot it across the bottom. It's n nothing special, anyone can fish it. Um, it's just something about that Ned Rig that's so subtle. It doesn't displace a ton of water. It looks really natural. It's a small, um, it's a small bait. That's one thing that I try to keep on all my bottom baits um, this time of year is I try to just keep them small and compact. Um, for whatever reason, I just I get a lot more bites doing that um, opposed to throwing a big tube or a big jig. You know, I try to try to keep things small and compact and subtle. But the one I really wanted to dive into was my jerk bait setup. So in this video, obviously, I caught quite a few big fish on a jerk bait, a deep diving jerk bait. This is the uh, Strike King KBD 300, just the deep diver. And this bait, when you take it out of the box, um, it'll dive. 12 to 13 foot deep um, straight out of the box. I throw it on 12 pound line, 12 pound Strike King tour, gate, tour grade fluorocarbon. I never go lighter than 12 and here's the reason why. I know a lot of guys throw their, their deep diving jerk baits and stuff on, on 10 pound line, something they're trying to get a little bit deeper. But the last few years that I've had forward, forward facing sonar, I used to throw all my deep diving jerk baits right at ice out on 10 pound line. And what I've noticed is that line has so much stretch. And when you have a, a bait with this KVD deep diver has, has a really big build to it for a jerk bait. And when you have a bait that has that big of a bill or a, a bait that gets that deep, your line, that 10 pound line has too much stretch. You just, it gets down to a certain depth and you can't get it any deeper because that line has so much stretch and a, a deep diving jerk, jerk bait, no matter what brand it is, has a big bill to it, a long wide bill. And it catches a lot of water. So you need that 12 pound line just seems like such a better line to, it has a lot less stretch than 10 and you can get it, you can get your jerk baits a, a couple feet deeper than if you can if you're throwing it on 10. I've just, when you're when you're using forward facing sonar, you can see how, literally how deep the bait's going. And uh, I've just seen it time and time again. So I just, I've completely switched to 12 pound line on my deep diving jerk baits. Um, one thing I do change on my, my deep diving jerk baits is the hooks. And I think this is extremely, extremely important um, this time of year. Um, especially on this this KVD deep diver, so I change them to Mustad, just the triple triple grip EWG hooks. I mean, Mustad's not a sponsor of mine or anything. I buy the hooks because to me they're the best they're the best treble hook on the market as far as landing fish. When you get them pinned on the on, on those hooks, nine times ninety nine times out of a hundred they're in the boat. Um, but on this jerk bait, those mustads are a little bit heavier than the stock hooks. So what that makes this bait do is it has an extremely, extremely, extremely slow sink to it. 
This bait out of the box with the standard treble hooks is a suspending jerk bait. It suspends perfectly, which for those of you who don't know what suspending means is wherever I twitch it and I stop it, the bait doesn't move. It doesn't rise and it doesn't drop. But when I change these treble hooks to mustads, the mustads are a little bit heavier. So the bait has a very, very slow sink. It's not plummeting to the bottom. It's, it's not sinking a, a foot a second by any means. But it's just a slow, slow, slow sink. And I really, really like that um, this time of year with my deep diving jerk bait. And the reason why is because majority of the time I'm using forward facing sonar and I am seeing the, the fish before I catch it. And when you throw a jerk bait that has a little bit of a slow sink to it, it's easier for you to get that bait down to the fish, especially with this deep diving KVD jerk bait and these mustads. I, I can literally on 12 pound line get this bait close to 15, get this bait down close to 15 foot of water which I've used every single, just about every single deep diving jerk bait on the market and I cannot get uh, another jerk bait that deep. Um, a lot of them top out of that 11 to 12 foot range. But to me, this is the best setup I've found with a, with a jerk bait as far as trying to get it as deep as possible. And a lot of our fish are, are hanging off those breaks in that 14, 15, 16 foot of water. So getting your bait down to them is extremely important. And another thing when you have a, a slowly sinking jerk bait and you're using you know, forward facing sonar is when you're 10, 20 feet behind that fish and you haven't quite made a long enough cast to get that bait down to them, if, it, if that jerk bait sinks slow, sinks a little bit, you can sink, you can dead stick that jerk bait and sink it down to the depth the fish are in. Um, that's why you'll see this time of year. I mean, I'll make casts with a jerk bait that are a minute and a half, two minutes long, and it's not because I want to. It's just because I'm I'm sinking this jerk bait down to the fish, and I caught a ton of fish doing that. Um, a ton of big ones in this bit in that in the video that I'm I'm playing through, and that's a big key this time of year to me, is having a slowly sinking jerk bait, especially the deep diving version if you're if you're using forward facing sonar. I know suspending jerk baits are what everyone wants this time of year, but um, to me, I want that slow, slow, subtle sink. So one last thing I'll say this time of year um, that I really pay attention to is when you're using forward facing sonar and you get around the the bluegills the crappie the perch you get in the right the right area you think that's a good area it's got a ton of ton of what the fish should be eating is slow down get on the outskirts of the, those bluegill and, and start panning around and a lot of times you only see one or two fish and the reason why is the fish this time of year sit so tight to the bottom, a lot of times they bury their bellies in the mud and you cannot even see them on forward facing sonar until you catch a couple. And when you start catching them and you get that, that group of fish fired up, what always happens, and I've seen it time and time again now, is those fish will rise a little bit. They'll get about six, eight inches off the bottom. And the reason why is now, now that you've caught a couple, they know, something's happening the there's other fish feeding and it fires them up and they get in that mood to eat and they'll come off the bottom enough to where you can see them so if you can't see fish this time of year on forward facing sonar it's it's not the end of the world that's that's why as they're sitting so tight to the bottom they're extremely extremely hard to see so you see a couple that's a usually a good area you know if i see two or three fish that's enough um for me to really slow down and pick apart that area just because like I said I've seen it time and time again where I've only seen one or two fish and then I, I catch them and then all of a sudden there's 30 of them all around the boat that that just come come right off the bottom so I hope this video helps like I said if you have any questions put it in the comment section or shoot me a message on my Instagram um, but uh but no, I really enjoy fishing this time of year. It's, it's one of the best times of year to go out and not only catch the biggest fish in the lake, but really good numbers as well. So 
I hope you liked the video. Um, if you'd like, please like and subscribe. Um, and yeah, I appreciate you guys watching.